Okay, some of these slides are not very good, but they give you an a, a, a example of, of, of neo-tantric art. After the talk, if you wish, you can look at this, um, you know, uh, sort of catalog. Um, this is one of the artists that was featured in the Neo Tantra show. Um, I also have a catalog of my own, which I, of an exhibition I did uh, last year, and um, I even have some of those for sale if anybody's interested. That contains a little sort of good amount on Neo Tantra, and I actually featured that as one of the streams of, of, of contemporary Indian art. But this is Viren De. And he is uh, also one of the founders. Unfortunately, this slide is very not very nice. So the kind of vibrant and you know fluorescent quality of his colors are not uh, very uh, understandable. But his work has that very neon quality, fluorescent quality to it. And uh, it's again about you can see that's the phallic symbol. It's the it's the linga and the yoni and the various sort of you know energy dynamics between them that he is, in some sense, making into a contemplation. What, what is the scale of these paintings? Well, it depends on whose work you're looking at. In this particular case, Birin Day, for example, he makes very large, pretty large um, canvases. They're kind of, you know, anywhere between uh, in height three to five, five feet. Uh, but Raza's paintings are typically very quite, I mean, you saw one very large one. That's why I showed that in the gallery, an enormous one. But a lot of his paintings are quite small. They're just about two feet square. It's a miniature of this, of the kind of, of the order that you're seeing in this exhibition. So there's quite a lot of variation. So these are all Biran De Day's uh, abstractions or forms. Now, this is another artist. And uh, this artist was also featured in the Neo Tantra show. And his name is uh, G.R. Gulam Rasul Santosh. Uh, G.R. Santosh is no more, He's, he has passed on. He died quite young, in fact. And uh, of all these neo-tantric artists, in some ways he was a very, very, one of the most brilliant of, of, of these artists. Uh, he was also Muslim. It's very interesting that, uh, like Haider Raza and uh, Gulam Rasul Santosh, uh, this particular formalism has been seen as not a sectarian kind of a spiritual practice, but one of those uh, Indian sort of mystic, uh, you know, sort of pra practices or schools that uh, is non-sectarian, completely non-sectarian. So we have um, Muslim artists who've taken to it, who've actually in, at some stage or the other entered into these practices of meditation, etc., And Hindu artists who've sometimes taken Muslim names because their teachers have been Muslim. We'll, we'll see one artist who was born a Hindu, but uh, his spiritual teacher was a Sufi. So uh, he, took the la he changed his last name to a Sufi last name, and he practices uh, the same kind of art. Uh, Gulam Rasul Santosh, the first two names, Gulam and Rasul, are, um, are uh, Islamic names. But Santosh is a Hindu last name, which he has taken for himself because he has entered into the practices and expressions of Neotantra. Uh, J.R. Santosh's uh, paintings are sometimes the most explicitly sexual in the sense that they're talking about the human figure during the sexual act. But in his descriptions, he's talking about these as androgynous figures. He's talking about the implosion of the sex act within a single body, in a sense. And he's talking about males becoming female, for example, and females actually becoming male in the inner practice of this Tantra. Uh, he uses a tremendous amount of uh, 
you know, sort of experimentation with form and with color. And you can see that they're very, very incandescent paintings. So its paintings are very, very optically charged. And, uh, you know, he also sort of uh, cautions against trying to look at them in terms of meaning, but more in terms directly of optical power. This is a folk goddess, Shitala, who is worshipped in the villages, and he has actually uh, sort of taken the myth of Shitala and kind of you know, given it this sort of uh, tantric formalism, a little, little less directly optical, but still uh, moving in that direction. Pardon? Yeah, the shape of the eye, the kind of very bright white against the red, the red is for heat, basically, you know, it's, again, the, the colors are kind of almost like, you know, sort of translations of, of sensed powers, okay, so the red is for heat, and those white eyes, the big, big white eyes are kind of like the power of consciousness, witnessing through that that heat. Cool, because they're white, very cool, but they're sort of cutting through the heat with consciousness. Now, this is another later generation uh, Nepali artist from Nepal. His name is Jyoti Duvadi. He actually lives in North Carolina and teaches over there. And uh, he, he sort of has some similar kind of geometric uh, diagrams and they're very, uh, you know, kind of, I mean, dynamic, you know, the sort of the sense of movement to his work. And he also takes it a little further in the sense that um, he's kind of created computer shapes as well that one can download off the website or even kind of, you know, meditate on. So that that's how he kind of, in a sense, universalizes his images so that his gallery is the World Wide Web. In a sense, anybody anywhere can meditate on his diagrams. It's no longer localized. These are some of his uh, more kind of, you know, com the computer generated uh, yantras, as he calls them. Unfortunately, these are not very good images, but you get an idea of his work. And if you actually look up Jyoti Duvadi on the on internet, you can get better images of the same for yourself and even download them. These are done on Nepali paper, and again, it's the kind of inverted triangle and the sort of power of generation and of conception and reception, things of that nature. Some line work, minimalist line work, following along these ideas. Okay, these paintings are by Amrita Banerjee, and uh, these are uh, also sort of meditational diagrams of the same kind, kind of, you know, arising spontaneously out of states of, you know, sort of meditation as it were. This one is called uh, Cosmic Drift. Basically, it shows uh, again the sort of in a series of inverted triangles, ascent, ascent and descent, which centers the whole thing along a central axis. But on the two hands, there is you know you find these kind of notions of the uh, the, the special attributes of the feet of uh, of the gods, say, and then you have some kind of power of time. You can see that the hourglass also over there pushing towards that direction, the whole thing is central, some sort of notion of that. 